Welcome to the first episode of Cooley's Retro Reviews, in which I'll be discussing this. The Oregon Trail handheld game released by Basic Fun in 2018. Designed to resemble 1980s style DOS and Macintosh computers, the device fittingly has a modified version of the 1985 Apple II and later 1990 DOS version of the Oregon Trail. The first extensively graphical game in the Oregon Trail series, the game not only features the expected resource management and trading elements, but hunting and rafting minigames as well. Returning to the device itself, the CRT styling brings the unfortunate side effect of making the device quite bulky, at 9 inches tall, 6 inches wide, and 2.5 and inches thick, making it too large to fit in most pockets. While this large volume means that much of the inside of the device is just empty space, it unfortunately still requires free AA batteries rather than a more practical rechargeable battery. To complement its retro stylings, the front of the device sports a floppy disk themed power button and a vent style speaker grill below the display, with several mechanical keyboard themed plastic buttons below that. Taking the place of a standard keyboard as a means of entering inputs into the game, the expected Y for yes, N for no, and enter keys are present on the right, with custom volume and wagon status buttons in the middle. On the left is a D-pad surrounded by diagonal directional buttons, with the latter being used for selecting options in the game's menus, and both being used for movement and aiming in the game's hunting minigame. After putting in free AA batteries and pressing the floppy disk-esque power button, we're greeted with the game's main menu, where the up and down buttons replace the numerical inputs that would normally be used in the original iterations of the game. After selecting a profession and entering the names of our group members, We select the month we wish to leave in, and purchase the necessary supplies from the general store. After this, we begin in Independence, Missouri, and begin making our way towards the first landmark on, of the trail. True to the original game, we can also change our pace and our food rations to go more quickly and use less food at the expense of the health of our group members. Should our group members ever become sick or injured, we can also stop to rest to let them recuperate. When we reach a river, we have, we're presented with several ways to cross it, including fording the river, caulking the wagon, and taking a ferry across if available. Should we need additional food along the trail, we can either attempt to trade for it on the trail or at an outpost, or go hunting for it. Different animals appear at different portions of the trail and can be hunted for by using the device's directional buttons. While there's no limit to the number of animals that can be hunted during one hunting session, only 100 pounds of food can be carried at one time.
Returning to the trail, I'll now speed up gameplay until I'm near the end. Should you prefer to skip to the review section of the video, a link to that section is available in the video description. When nearing the end of the trail, we're asked to choose between floating down the Columbia River and continu continuing down the Barlow Toll Road. When nearing the end of the trail, we're asked to choose between floating down the Columbia River and continuing down the Barlow Toll Road. When nearing the end of the trail, we're asked to when nearing the end of the trail, we're asked to choose between floating down. When nearing the end of the trail, we're asked to choose between floating down the Columbia River and continuing down the Barlow Toll Road. So we'll choose to float down the river. In this rafting mini game, we have to navigate the raft left and right as it floats down the river, avoiding the frequent rocks along the way. Having finally reached Willamette Valley, we're given a score based on how we performed. Before the game returns us to the main menu. Having played through the game, before giving it a final review and score, I think it's important to put it into, into context with the other portable Oregon Trail options available. While there are several modern reimaginings of the game on the DSi, 3DS, and Apple Arcade, these versions are platform specific, have varied availability, and do not necessarily compete directly with the near original versions of the game, such as that present on the Oregon Trail handheld system. While another dedicated recreation of the classic Oregon Trail games exists, in the form of the Oregon Trail micro arcade device. That version is plagued by, no by numerous glitches that make it impossible to reach Oregon. Finally, another option for playing the classic Oregon Trail games exists via DOSBox, a DOS emulator available on Android, several dedicated emulation handhelds, and even an iOS via the iDOS app. Going this route, however, would require the use of an original DOS copy of the game which would require the user to input keyboard controls rather than the simplified menu system implemented in this handheld version of the game. If you already have a handheld device with DOSBox support, however, it may prove to be a more practically portable option for playing the Oregon Trail on the go. Wild Advice's Oregon Trail implementation is a faithful conversion of the 1985 Apple II and 1990 DOS iterations and it improves upon them by removing the need for an external keyboard and allowing the player to, sa to save at any time, it is ultimately hampered by the form factor of its hardware. While the retro aesthetic 
is a neat gimmick the first time the device is used. It ultimately hampers the key element that any handheld device should, should succeed at, portability. If the device were made slimmer, perhaps half an inch rather than two and a half inches thick, it might be more practical, but in its current state, I give the device three out of five stars. Thanks for watching my first retro review video. While I intend to continue releasing funky S videos to demonstrate that device's capabilities to those awaiting their own funky S devices. To improve the diversity of the content I create on this channel, I'll be experimenting with videos regarding other subjects as well. Should there be enough interest in this series, I have several other devices I'm considering reviewing as well, but there's, if there's anything specific you think I should review, let me know.